Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John's report is for the 28th. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through the numbers. Market behaved pretty much as expected. We could see the beginnings of a um, sell in the intraday setup as well as even within the daily. And sure enough, uh, did pretty well to expectations. Um, remained in that weak configuration. So no issues with it at all. Uh, and you can see the transformation here from the Dow 30 to all that blue now to a bunch of red. And here we go with the uh, high flyer setups. A lot of new cells popped into those. And we saw the beginning parts of them as we saw a bunch of purple develop in the last couple of days. And now it's being executed. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we had some exciting developments. Let's go ahead and take a look at those first. There it is, 50K. We've been following for, well, forever. I mean, we also had the nice pop. We knew this was coming back. It was going to come right back to that uh, 1960. Boom, became the next opportunity to get in. And then um, we could actually see the deterioration developing a little earlier than this. It was back up over here, right around the peak. It was just a shy of where um, the end peak was, but it really would have been closer to up here at 81. We continued by for another day or so before it ends up closing out at 78. So it's pretty close to the same, but um, that's where the real deterioration begins. And I would actually uh, argue that once you see the steel dip below um, the sign at this particular point, you've got your clear indication uh, once the red breaks below this peak right here. And it's about right over in here where it happened. So give or take 1.2 points right in the same territory. Now, what does that do as far as the performance reports? We should take a look at that because that's interesting. All right. So new green dot here points to equity highs having reached a new level. Um, periodic return. So this was 2013. Um, you know, it'll be interesting um, whatever kind of trades we get going forward coming through here. Um, if we get a little more chop in the market, we'll probably see this number increase a bit more dramatic. Some people say, oh, well, you know, you need a rising market. Well, the reality is no, we need a market that just um, moves up and down in swings and that's going to give the best returns. Um, so a little behind the curve from where we were in the previous year. And total wise, so it gives us a 2.12 profit factor, barely 50% win rate, 95 over 90. Um, we've actually done much better than that in knowing when we could have gotten out. And just in the last uh, month, we've talked about four different trades that we probably would have uh, been out sooner, taken gains, and then uh, reconstituted on uh, different moves. So, all in all, though, perfect. No objection to it whatsoever. Uh, it is interesting. I saw a uh, member posted an article on um, stock tweets. And, you know, this is just what I've been talking about for many years. And surprising it's taken this long for many people to come around to the understanding of it or even to notice it. Now, unfortunately, you know, filing a lawsuit on it, it's problematic in the sense that it draws attention to what we've been taking advantage of for quite a few number of years. And that is this... Um, false trading these algorithms that are utilizing uh, the ability to uh, create these artificial setups and um, it's very effective and there's no reason for them to change it we did notice and it's interesting I was talking about it last week well or actually at the beginning of the week um, some of the subtle changes that I was seeing well yeah that was about last week and that so not shocking that you know little articles like these things would pop up at this particular time they were making some adjustments uh, probably in anticipation of things, and maybe that was what their intent was to lighten up so it would be less evident when the news of these things comes out. Um, they're definitely aware of these kinds of things. But what we saw from a daily standpoint, uh, we still had cyan rising, but which was negative, but we had a little bit of improvement with the uh, red, and then we ended up with our green pivots, and then what we were looking for was the steel dipping below, and uh, that happened in pre-market, and we were watching it. Back over here. Is where it first started. You get your first inclination here where the cyan rises above. And then what we start to see, and I mark it here with this blue line, is successively lower peaks of the red until finally penetrated it right here for a brief move. And then what do we get? Cyan popping up. Now, uh, some people say, oh, well, that's an immediate deal spread. Can't you sell there? Well, no, you've got this rising red that you're going to be dealing with at that point. What I look for is the steel dipping below. And once the steel dips below, 
Then you get your opportunity to jump on that and take advantage of the short. Once again, and it was interesting during the day, I was calling these various split points when they moved uh, for the short signals. And they were right around, uh, oh gosh, I think it was 73 and a quarter is where I was calling for one. I did that on stock puts and that. And then talking about how we were going to come back down towards these lows. Didn't quite get to the lows. Uh, got pretty close, got back to the um, roughly the open areas, 68 and three quarters range. And just did the same thing, but produced the exact same um, sell signals. In fact, uh, doubled it up right there, though you ended up with a little bit higher red, so that could uh, hold on. But uh, this doesn't look to have changed any uh, to start the week, particularly when we look at the daily signal. I mean, you've got a clear down. You can get a reversal of that. We'll see it early Sunday, but um, overall, not the uh, greatest because you're not taking out this previous peak right here. There's still a chance for it to turn around uh, and go positive. We didn't dip below the... Uh, Cyan here on the uh, negative 50 for the extreme histogram. So the potential is that it could still move a little bit lower and bring it down just a bit. So be wary of that. Um, very clear, likewise, with the NQ. So you ended up with cyan higher. Beautiful right there. Dip below the cyan, then also the green fading. So you had all your bulls running from the scenario. At the same time, bears got a little more anxious and that caused a bit more of the uh, capitation to the downside. And, you know, the potential is retracing right down about here. 39.25, nothing dramatic. I don't call that super duper. Um, it was nice and pronounced here with the um, Dow. As you can see, the Dow has been clearly much weaker here, making the lower pivot. Also, lower pivots on the green, and then boom, you started to break above with the cyan above, and that happened right back over here before this started to decay, and then it was the trigger of the steel finally uh, was the nail in the coffin, and then it just executed the uh, final takedown. What was the target down there? 16.830. I don't think we got that low. Uh, 16.846. So I got within 15. Didn't quite get to the target from the downside uh, gap. So it really becomes straightforward, and it's definitely um, going back to that 5,000 tick. Um, and I want you to be looking for this progression because what happened when you get into here and you end up with these nice little buys of the green above red, if you didn't have the steel coming from underneath, you've got a definite problem um, with the likelihood of it uh, being a sustained move. And, uh, and as you can see, all this no steel dipping below the last time it happened was right back over here before uh, it became the last of its uh, decline moves. And then we have the deep red, and then that was all she wrote. So once you had the peak move on the deep red, boom, it just was straight downhill from there. So pay attention. It's worth noting. It's uh, extremely powerful. Gives you a big advantage. Uh, knowing that TLT was in the safety zone, um, May or may not have helped. That was a big drop that they really uh, squeezed everyone out with the dip below down here to the red line, and then they jack it right back up uh, immediately. Uh, unfair when that happens? Eh, I don't know about that. It's no different than gold. You know what to expect when you trade some of these things. We liked it from, you know, anywhere. Well, once it started to get to 25, then we get to the peak here. Um, I was looking at it from you know, right around 124.70, and sure enough, got pulled into that and it took off, no surprise, uh, it wasn't uh, unexpected, we knew what to look for and uh, it was clearly forming that function. Um, the interesting part if the uh, cyan uh, continues to dip and that steel moves a little further above and have an even bigger um, turnaround from it. So it could be a nice little rise there. This is not pretty for um, oil at this particular point so we would expect a return back down. To those lows, if this continues to break uh, in the same direction, so steel below is a sell, green below is a sell, and cyan rising above zero is a sell, and then red below white is a sell. So clearly, the fact that there was any return back in there from the open was just a bonus uh, for some of these guys to get out. Uh, clean and simple. Euro, you know, this has been an ongoing one too. Likewise, again here, no dips below with the steel. To represent a buy. So every time you get to the uh, capitation points of 
meeting in that without any support from there. All you're looking at is just the beginning fade, and then I love to look for the steel dipping below, the cyan as my trigger points, and then take advantage of those for longer plays. And this has been a very nice one, all the way back from, well, the original one uh, took place right back over here. That was up near almost 139-ish. Uh, and then from that particular point, uh, it's just decayed uh, steadily. And that is just a realization that... Um, Unfortunately for the Fed, that uh, U.S. rates may have to rise sooner, and that will put downward pressure on the market because higher rates means less borrowing to inflate uh, stock prices. So, um, X little crossover sell signal within that uh, small move, but you're in the safety zone there. I'm not expecting too much uh, of a horrible setup with that. It could expand if it gets above the uh, uh, red, then I would be a little more concerned with it, and. Um, you can use the ABM as definite stops there. I would not be selling puts under those kind of situations. Um, I had done so for uh, CLF uh, several times during the week. Um, every time it dipped down, we had attractive uh, little buy turnarounds. And then uh, even on this uh, last one, uh, it was right down here at the open. Took the opportunity on that Friday to sell 1550s. Um, <laughs> Now, I wasn't expecting 16. I was expecting it to, to close up right around 1550 as the um, kind of uh, end point for uh, the option for the week. But, uh, you know, obviously got carried away with some uh, short sellers. But, you know, it's premium that uh, stocks like these offer. Nice. Um, have to wait for a retrace now. These positive extremes. Um, take an opportunity at that point to sell 1550s again. No point in chasing any of them. That's what it looked like from the daily standpoint. Um, we liked the way it looked. Interesting to have the uh, cyan now here on the daily move above and um, still almost crossing below it even though it's on the uh, uprise. So that's uh, even though it's put in the buy signal we may see a little bit of uh, pullback within that before um, it takes a final effect. But we're still rising red so I like the fact that red and particularly since it's rising above zero that would be uh, nice to take out this previous one. So any new buy signal in there is going to be attractive to meet this orange target. 1697. It's a healthy one. Uh, conversely, we have the positive extreme for WLT off of its nice little buy. Turned around, likewise, steel dip below there at the same time started to rise. So a little bit of a decline. Not as much as probably should have been. That's just because it had a nice rise in red um, at that particular point. So it's going to have to. Uh, decay a little bit further and create some lower pivots before I would think that it's going to come back to the uh, full setup there. Let's take a look at some alert stocks while we're here. Uh, let's go with Apple first. That was uh, Twitter. Green still uh, above, so we didn't have a horrible time with this. Cyan is still below red-white. Still bullish within uh, the overall. Yes, we've got the deep red readings right there. And you've got the first indications of uh, a sell within that configuration where you have the steel dipping below. So it's going to be your first sign of weakness. And I was talking about this uh, going forward there. We've got the close. Now, if that starts to roll over a little bit more in the next day or two, then I would expect that you're going to get the full retrace on that because it's going to be a lower peak. So um, could be just a fraction early on it. But I thought uh, pointing it out that at this close, it's not a bad way to, to start to nibble if uh, you're interested in that kind of thing, or better yet, take some gains on that. Um, our intraday on uh, Amazon went sell even before the turnaround there. We had plenty of positive extremes. And all I was really expecting from that uh, was just uh, those retraces down to um, that 334-ish level, um, but it certainly went a bit further. And then that, that happens sometimes with carry through on those kinds of things. Um, not a big deal. Baidu had been looking good for quite a while for us um, all throughout when it crossed over here. And Cyan has been below throughout this entire thing. And, you know, people are like, oh, when's it going to stop? It's like, well, there's nothing in here that was said it was going to stop. It just continued to do what was expected. And then, of course, blows out. And, you know, people talk about, no, oh, wow, nice gain for the one. No, this has been a gain from, you know, all the way back here. Um, you know, when we were liking it down in the 188 range, 187. And, you know, now the two. 26 people are just like oh good opportunity no that's late <laughs> we could see the weakness developing for Faz as well we pointed it out 
it's, it's almost boring to talk about it because it's sort of like you already knew what was going to happen. This just sort of becomes a fait accompli. You just kind of shake your head. Yeah, okay. And it's right in line with what we were looking for. We could see that Facebook was not a problem uh, in where it was, but didn't look all that exciting as far as new uh, push to the upside. And likewise, uh, now you've got a little bit of a dip of that steel. If it dips a little bit lower, you might see even a little bit more uh, weakness with that. Yes, yeah, got plenty of positive extremes, but with the cyan way below down here and the red still rising. Uh, it's some time away from having any issues. Google has been uh, okay. It just got weak here as the steel dipped below, and then it kept going below. And so all along this time, it was like, okay, I just felt fine uh, taking opportunities to short the peaks on it every time it popped up. And then you just look for modest little things until you get a final resolution like this where the steel finally pops above. I mean, the sign that pops above the green and the red, and then now you've got uh, uh, red also dipping below the white. You're still making off of a higher pivot, so the potential for it holding up along these ABMs is pretty darn good. So it's not one of those that I'm looking at as a long-term short per se at this point. Could develop into that. Hasn't quite shown it. The one that has been a short signal for quite some while here is uh, Netflix, and it continues to. Uh, exacerbating that deep uh, red and with some powerful readings you know usually when you start to see this negative 54 55 and plus um, I look for extended runs to the downside on those as they come through um, trying to develop a scale for you that would be easy enough to identify uh, as to uh, how to rate that because it can be impacted by that uh, green moving back above um, as a negation we'll talk about that further and PCLN, yeah, weakness we expected, nothing surprising there. We're just talking about this yellow and coming back to it. Uh, wasn't anything traumatic from that standpoint, but clearly the weakness has been expressed, and we were just looking for it. Um, oh, you know, I should point out what uh, symbol we're running here. This is the DOC paint bar. I'll show a couple of the others from the charts that I use that will. Uh, let you know which ones I tend to uh, utilize on the different uh, um, stocks and charts that I show up because I, I mentioned to a couple of members that I would do that so that they could configure theirs similar to what they're seeing here. Uh, Tesla, yeah, nothing. It's been more bearish than anything with this rising and now the steel below. I would expect a little bit lower. It's held up nicely on it. Sometimes they do that. Not enough sellers. Anyway, also uh, weakness, and that would be more weakness here for Twitter if um, the steel dips below. It's been a gentle rise here, also higher for the green, um, but at this particular point now you've got to watch if the uh, sign gets above zero and that steel dips below, then I would expect a bit more of a return to retrace like we talked about the uh, dip below the red line right there in the 35 range. And that pretty much is what's going on there. If I put back up the 50K, I'll show you which one this one is. I believe it's the B, yeah. And I like it just because it gives you the very clear distinction of the colors as they change over. Um, it was intending to show more of this representation when we get the spatial uh, difference between the um, zones of the red, green, and uh, white to uh, steel and cyan uh, forming to the high side. Uh, let's see if I've got a different one here. That should be... Uh, Open one. There we go. It's just regular DOC. I know I'm running uh, A, Bs, and Cs on the major one. This happens to be C. Um, oftentimes, intraday, I'll run uh, the buy sell A a lot when I'm putting it. But I think that's those are the charts that I put up on uh, stock twits before. Um, subtle difference, but uh, the majority of the regular ones. Uh, in fact, I should put one or two of them up there just to verify so that you know what I've got like for the euro. Buy, sell, A, yeah. And it gives it a nice clear distinction because you get the red. And oftentimes, even if you want to, you can put a DOC first and then have the buy, sell, A underneath. And what it does is it just gives you the numbers. Um, and the easy way to see whether you're doing that is you just click and you can see which uh, programs are running right there. Extreme Histogram. This one is the ABM. Oh, that has a separate additional one in there. DOC converted. And for the paint bar, pretty straightforward. So all in all, uh, excellent uh, call to start out, uh, you know, the end of the week and then begin the new one. Uh, I do want to point out we have um, indicators will be ending well, for the month of June, July, I mean, uh, mid 
well, right at the very end of the week. So I'll probably have those ready by uh, Wednesday so there won't be any delay for anyone uh, wanting to make sure they have them all set up and ready to go uh, for the next month. But I've been making some, like I said, adjustments to a few of the algorithms. And uh, the ones coming out will also have the ability for you to turn on and off all the various alert uh, capabilities as well as turning on and off these numbers that pop up so that you have complete control over those features. And I will explain each of the... Uh, on and off values. So we're going to turn them into ones and twos so that you don't have uh, when alerts pop up. If you have a bunch of inputs, as I've learned, it all shows false, true, and then you have these like line after line of all these false and trues that it doesn't make any sense in relation, but what it's doing is just showing what's in the in input language. And we want to avoid that. We want to make it just uh, simple, like you see on the D Omega converted here where I've done it with just the ones and then zero. And you just put in a one or a zero, make it simple that way. As always, we'll talk again later. I'm sorry for going for so long, but uh, lots of good information. Trade well.